There's no other way to put it. This one-on-one -on -one match is going to be a struggle in every sense of the word. Neither man looks like they are remotely entertaining the idea of backing down. This is gonna be good. And this is one of those matches where it's hard to believe we get paid for this. Well, actually, it's hard to believe Seth gets paid for anything. Not where he wants to be right now. Hey, he got himself into this mess. Well, he's got to get himself out of it now. And Byron, this takes a ton of strength to pull off, am I right? Oh, you are definitely right, Michael. But you also have to remember how much energy it drains to pull off. Guys, you never know what you're going to see in a match like this. And if you need proof of that, just go back to watch Daniel Bryan versus Kane from Extreme Rules 2014. As Corey mentioned, Daniel Bryan versus Kane from 2014 provided scenes we never thought we'd see. Most notably for me was Bryan carrying Kane back to the ring via a forklift. That's right up there, Michael, but let's not forget that was also the match where Kane went through a flaming table. Oh, so ruthless. Now that's how you use a table to your advantage. Incredible. Back in the ring again. He's fighting from underneath. He's not looking like himself here. But he's very aware of who he's in there with and what he has to do to rebound. Oh, he's able to reverse it. He wants to do this in the ring. He's fighting from underneath. Without a doubt, this is a volatile situation, guys. WWE superstars are dangerous without weapons. Then you put them in an environment like this, and who knows what you're liable to see. Ain't no stopping them now. He's fighting from underneath. He's not in a good spot here, guys. He simply needs to find a way to regroup. Hard to argue Michael's point on volatility and the volatility of this match, but what I think oftentimes gets overlooked is the mental anguish that goes along with competing in a match like this. Oh, boo-hoo, cry me a river. Take down to the mat. The old bridging, Fujiwara Armbar. There it is. He lets it go. Yeah, I wonder why. The WWE Universe is ecstatic to see Daniel Bryan back in action tonight. Their love for Bryan has been a constant ever since 2013 when he ascended to the main event picture and formed the Yes Movement. Bull Nelson applied. Gets out of the way of that one. As Byron was discussing, the Yes Movement really was effective in getting under the skin of Triple H. After Bryan staged Occupy Raw and filled the ring with fans, Triple H had no choice but to give Daniel Bryan a title opportunity at WrestleMania. Well, it wasn't that easy, Cole. Bryan still had a heck of a mountain to climb, needing to defeat Triple H in the show's opening match to earn the opportunity in the main event. He did that. Oh, my goodness! He's fighting from underneath. 
In matches like this, guys, you learn very quickly which superstars have what it takes to truly get extreme. Great job escaping, trying to turn this thing around. Take down to the mat. The old bridging Fujiwara armbar. Here's his moment, Michael. Regarding Corey's point about superstars having what it takes to get extreme, I would argue that every superstar in the locker room possesses a mean streak. Yeah, but not all mean streaks are... Digging deep for a kick out. This is amazing. Well, it's not going to be pretty. Going to sleep, GTS. Night, night. But he's really, really struggling now. If you would have thought that yelling yet, yeah, this singles contest has a victor. Here is your winner and new WWE Champion, CM Punk. An amazing contest comes to a close following a decisive pinfall victory to get the pin